Welcome to Jesus Calling for September 13th. Come to me and rest. Give your mind a break from its habitual judging. Oh, this is going to be really good. Let's look up Matthew 7 verse 1 and John 17 verse 3. Okay, this is Matthew chapter 7 and the chapter title is called Judging Others. 7 verse 1. Do not judge or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And then I just really like verse 3. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your neighbor's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Those are some really wise words, aren't they? Let's look at the next verse. All right, we're looking at John 17, 3. Um, the chapter title is Jesus Prays for Himself. I'll just start with verse 1. After Jesus said this, He looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify Your Son, that Your Son may glorify You. For You granted Him authority over all people, that He might give eternal life to all those You have given Him. Now, this is eternal life, that You may know the one and only true God and Jesus Christ, whom You have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Come to me and rest. Give your mind a break from its habitual judging. You form judgments about this situation, that situation, this person, that person, yourself, even the weather, as if judging were your main function in life. But I created you first and foremost to know me and to live in rich communication with me. I'm reading that again. But I created you first and foremost to know me and live in rich communication with me. When you become preoccupied with passing judgment, you usurp my role. Relate to me as creature to creator, sheep to shepherd, subject to king, clay to potter, Allow me to have my way in your life. Rather than evaluating my ways with you, accept them thankfully. The intimacy I offer you is not an invitation to act as if you were my equal. That's good. Reading that one more time. The intimacy I offer you is not an invitation to act as if you were my equal. Worship me as King of Kings while walking hand in hand with me down the path of life. Oh, I love, there's so much in here I love. Okay, so yes, we should not all be um, judging, you know, and and sometimes I don't know if I'm so much judging people as just like, like comparing myself with them, which I guess is judging too, but he just says, forget all of that. There's so many great things in here. I gotta put my old lady glasses back on, but I just love it. Relate to me as creature to creator. And that's how I want to be. I don't want to be in the judging role. That's for him to do, he's saying. Sheep to shepherd, subject to king, clay to potter. We are but clay in his hands. And he just wants us to be worshiping him and not worry about judging and not worry about all these other things. If I keep my eyes on my relationship with him, guess what? I've got no time to be judging anybody else or doing anything. And I love that verse too, where they're talking about you have a log sticking out of your eye and there's a tiny speck in your neighbor's eye or your friend's eye. And we're always so busy picking out everybody else's faults and logs. I'm going to, this is a good reminder today, to just be focused on me and how I'm doing in my relationship to God and look at the big log in my eye and forget everybody else's specks in their eyes, right? And when we do that, I think we're just happier too, right? Because we're just in more communion with God. So today, I hope you have a log-free day and that you remember clay to potter, creature to creator. Let's keep things in order and you have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow. Welcome to Jesus Calling for September 17th. You will not find my peace by engaging in excessive planning. This should be interesting. Let's look at 1 Peter 5 verses 6 to 7 and Proverbs 16, 9. All right, 1 Peter, written by Peter. Chapter 5, the chapter title here is Two Elders and Young Men. 
He's giving instructions, how to be shepherds of God's flock. And then I'm going to jump down to five. Young men, in the same way, be submissive to those who are older. All of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. I'm going to continue on with verse 8. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Proverbs are about in the middle of the Bible. Nice little like two-liner nuggets. If you haven't read Proverbs in a while, try to read it. One thing that I like to do is to read um, a proverb a day. So on the 1st of September, I read Proverbs 1. On the 2nd of September, read Proverbs 2, just like that. Anyway, verse 9 of chapter 16 says, In his heart a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. You will not find my peace by engaging in excessive planning, attempting to control what will happen to you in the future. That is a commonly practiced form of unbelief. When your mind spins with multiple plans, peace may sometimes seem to be within your grasp, yet it always eludes you. Just when you think you have prepared for all possibilities, something unexpected pops up and throws things into confusion. I think we can all relate to that. I did not design the human mind to figure out the future. That is beyond your capability. I crafted your mind for continual communication with me. Bring me all your needs, your hopes, and your fears. Commit everything into my care. Turn from the path of planning to the path of peace. Okay, there's so much in here. I really love the last line. I'll read it one more time. Turn from the path of planning to the path of peace. And I think, you know, what she's saying here is, of course, it's, you know, you don't want to not plan. I mean, you need to plan for your education and you need to try to save money and it's good to wake up and plan your day. If you don't plan your day and put God in there, the world will throw other stuff in there. However, we don't want to be so into our plans you know, when we're making our plans, we always want to say, God, what do you think? What is the best career move for me? What is the best thing for me to share with my child today who might be on the wrong path or disobedient or whatever? So it's always good to include God and Jesus um, in your plans. But I'm going to go back and read this one line again because I love it. I did not design the human mind to figure out the future. That is beyond your capability. I crafted your mind for continual communication with me. And so I just hope that um, today that you can just realize that uh, you're not going to know the future. And we can, like I said, plan things out as much as we can. And you want to plan them in God's will. But then just give your day to him. You know, I know sometimes I've had a day where I think I'm going to do this, this, and this. And then I go out somewhere and there's somebody who needs help or just a situation comes up and God might just reroute your whole day. And the cool thing is just to go, okay, God, well, I guess this is what you want me to be doing today. And so then go do that thing for him and do it with a joyful heart. You know, don't be all upset that your plans are messed up because he knows the best thing for you and he knows the best thing for me and he knows what his other children need out there too. And you might be part of that plan of helping somebody else out. So don't worry if your plans get messed up. Always plan with God in mind, and I hope you just have a good day relying on the fact that He knows the future. He holds the future. So um, there's a great saying that says, you know, I may not know the future, but I know who holds the future. So He's holding your future, my friend. So just have a great day walking and resting, knowing that He's holding your future. And we'll see you back here tomorrow. Welcome to Jesus Calling for September 19th. There is a mighty battle going on for the control of your mind. Let's look at Ephesians 2 verse 6 and Psalm 27 verse 8. Ephesians is a book in the New Testament written by Paul to the church in Ephesus. And we're going to start with chapter 2. The chapter title is Made Alive in Christ. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. I'm going to just jump down to four. But because of his great love for us, 
God, who was rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Jesus Christ in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Jesus Christ. And then here is a great couple verses that everyone should have memorized, right? Verse 8, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift from God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Oh, the amazing grace of God. The other verse is Romans 8, verse 6, and I'm going to start back. Uh, the chapter title is Life Through the Spirit. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. And then I'm just going to jump down to 4. And so he condemns sin in sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might fully be met, in us who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the spirit, those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what the nature desires, but those who live according to the spirit have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit of God that lives in you. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But, here we go, if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Isn't that beautiful? That makes me think of this old Cherokee parable that they have where the grandfather is telling the grandson that there's two wolves fighting inside of his mind. One is mean and envious and jealous and the other one is full of good and helpfulness and peace. And the little grandson says, well, which wolf wins? And he says, the one you feed. And I love that. And I always remember thinking about that. Am I feeding my soul and my mind with the world? Or am I feeding my soul and my mind with things of Jesus? And am I reading the Bible and filling up with his word? Word, you know, so that's really neat. So think about that this week. What are you feeding? There is a mighty battle going on for the control of your mind. Heaven and earth intersect in your mind. The tugs of both spheres influence your thinking. I created you with the capacity to experience foretastes of heaven. When you shut out the world and focus on my presence, you can enjoy sitting with me in the heavenly realms. Isn't that awesome? This is an incredible privilege reserved for my precious ones who belong to me and seek my face. Your greatest strength is your desire to spend time communing with me. As you concentrate on me, my spirit fills your mind with life and peace. The world exerts a downward pull on your thoughts. Media bombard you with greed, lust, and cynicism. When you face these things, pray for protection and discernment. Stay in continual communication with me whenever you walk through the wastelands of this world. Refuse to worry because this form of worldliness will weigh you down and block awareness of my presence. Stay alert, recognizing the battle being waged against your mind. Look forward to an eternity of strife-free living reserved for you in heaven. Mm, that is really good. I'm going to read this one line one more time here. Your greatest strength is your desire to spend time communing with me. As you concentrate on me, my spirit fills your mind with life and peace. And you know, that is true. There is a mighty battle going on um, for our minds. And I fear actually even more for the younger kids these days too, because I mean, that the media and everything they're being bombarded with, but you know, we can just, we can choose every day, right? We can choose, are we going to feed our mind with the bad negative stuff and watch news and depressing stuff or things that pull us away from God? Or are we going to spend time every day 
with Jesus because Jesus is calling us, right? You know, so my prayer for you today is that you do take the time to spend with him and then just, you can just bask in his love and his glory and think about things like, you know, Romans 8, where we have all the grace coming to us and everything. So I hope today and every day that you do take time to spend with God and play some praise music also. Praise music is awesome. I know there's times I'm like, I don't want to drive to work or I'm having a bad day and I'm like, okay, I'll put on some praise music. And I'm telling you, the moment you put that praise music on, it's like your heart is just lifted. You're looking up to God, focusing on Him and all the worries of the world go away. So if you haven't listened to praise music in a while and you live around St. Louis, 99.1 99.1 Joy FM, but anything on the internet is great. And I hope today you have a wonderful day focusing on Him and just pushing that world all aside. Have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Welcome to Jesus Calling for September 21st. Wait quietly in my presence. This is going to be good. I love all the ones that just have us wait. Let's look up uh, 1 Kings 19, 12. 1 Kings, we don't usually get to the Old Testament much, so that'll be good. And then Psalm 5, verse 3. Okay, I love this story. Uh, 1 Kings 19, the chapter title is, The Lord Appears to Elijah. I'm just going to read the whole thing. It's not that long. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for God, the Lord Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. And I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. It's all like boo-hoo, boo-hoo, right? And the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. Other translations say a still, small voice. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood in the mouth of the cave. Psalm 5, 3. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. Wait quietly in my presence while my thoughts form silently in the depths of your being. Do not try to rush this process because hurry keeps your heart earthbound. I am the creator of the entire universe, yet I chose to make my humble home in your heart. It is there where you know me most intimately. It is there where I speak to you in holy whispers. Ask my spirit to quiet your mind so that you can hear my still, small voice within you. I am speaking to you continually, words of life, peace, and love. Turn your heart to receive these messages of abundant blessing. Lay your requests before me and wait in expectation. That is just so great. I love it. Wait quietly in my presence while my thoughts form silently in the depths of your being. Do not try to rush this process because hurry keeps your heart earthbound. I am the creator of the entire universe, yet I chose to make my humble heart I am the creator of the entire universe, yet I chose to make my humble home in your heart. It is there where you know me most intimately. It is there where I speak to you in holy whispers. Ask my spirit to quiet your mind so that you can hear my still, small voice within you. I am speaking to you continually, words of life, peace, and love. Turn your heart to receive these messages of abundant blessing. Lay your requests before me and wait in expectation. That is just so great. I love it. So in both of those, in the psalm, it says how we lay our requests before him and wait in expectation. And then in the story with Elijah, I mean, it's just so funny, right? He's kind of like, oh, everyone's turning away and now they're chasing me and I'm the only one left. And how often are we like that too? You know, we're just kind of like boohooing our list, you know, before God. But you know what? He hears all of our 
um, prayers and requests. He knows what's going on. And what he wants most is for us just to come to him and be quiet and just still our minds and still our hearts and just focus on him. He wasn't in the big rock earthquake and he wasn't in the wind and he wasn't in the fire. What was he in? The still small voice. So I hope today that you take time to just be listening to God's voice and do it all day long. You know, even at work, you can just take a little break and even just close your eyes and just say, God, I'm just listening for your still small voice. I'm listening for a word on what to do. And he will speak to you because he is faithful to do that. And he just wants you to bask in your presence and how exciting that he has decided to make his home in our heart. That's pretty awesome. So I hope you have a peaceful day reflecting on him and listening for that still small voice. And I'll see you back here tomorrow. You can order your own Jesus Calling devotional book by going to JesusCalling.com. And I would love to answer any questions you may have about faith in Jesus. Just email me through my website, NancyJoyToYou.com. And I hope you go out and shine for him today. See you tomorrow.